Hey there, Nick Takis here. In this video, we're gonna add a little life to our shell scripts by using ANSI color codes. We're gonna support eight colors, 16 colors, 256 colors, as well as 24-bit true color using RGB as long as your terminal supports it. We're also gonna go over a couple of different styles like bold, dim, italic, underline, and even strike through, again, as long as your terminal and font support all of that. So let's get cracking here. I'm just gonna throw an example here. We're gonna break it down. By the way, we're also gonna go over how to use this with printf, echo, as well as here docs, and even clean things up to make it a little bit easier if you wanna reference colors in a shell script using variables. So with that said, cool, all right. So we have first uh, the escape character that we need to have here. You know, I like to use backslash E, but you may have seen this in other examples where there's this like 033, that is the octal code there for an escape character. There's another hex code for another one. I always forget them, but I like to stick with backslash E here just because E for escape is a nice little mental map. Then we have the bracket here, which is going to start a command. And then we have a couple of different arguments separated by semicolons. In this case, technically the zero is optional, but that is going to reset any styling and colors you might have previously. You know, maybe things that are out of your control here. Typically I like to use the zero here to be explicit, but again, depending on what you're working on, maybe you don't want to reset something like a background color or whatever. So yeah, you just wouldn't set it then. But yeah, I would typically default to always including the zero there. Then we have 36, which is going to be the actual ANSI color code for cyan here. You know, we can change this value to be other things. We'll get to that in one second. Finally, the last argument here is the mode, which is going to be things like dim, bold, italic, underline, etc. Okay, so let's see some examples here. You know, 30 is black. Again, it's gonna depend on what your terminal looks like. Then we have 31, I believe is red. 32 is green. Then we have 33, which is going to be yellow. And 34, I think is blue. And then uh, 35, is going to be uh, magenta, 36 is cyan, 37 I believe is white. And then that's your eight colors right there, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then, you know, let's say that you want to just deal with background colors instead. Well, it's pretty interesting because if we go back to this example here, uh, all we have to do is add 10 to these numbers. So then that's going to be uh, this one. Um, but yeah, if we do something like that, that's going to be red. And then we have uh, green and then we have our yellow, then we have blue coming up, and then we have, uh, what else? We have, uh, yep, magenta, always forget that one. Um, 46, there's our cyan, and then here we are back to white. And then, yeah, pretty nice, pretty cool. You know, just add 10, remove 10 if you wanna go back to the foreground color, like this is going to be yellow in the foreground. Then we have things like uh, the mode, which could be, in this case, it's going to be bold, but you can do two for dim. So in this case, you know, let's go back to here, bring it back to one so we can see it side by side. But you can see the top one is a lot more dimmed out. You know, if we go to something like green, you know, that is going to be bold. And then I'm not gonna do it for all of them, by the way, but that one is uh, dimmed out here as well. Maybe a little bit harder to see because it's kind of mixed in with the prompt, but that green is definitely a lighter or dimmer than the top one there. Now there's all sorts of different other ones that you can do. I don't have them all memorized here, but uh, yeah, I believe it goes up to nine, maybe a little bit more, but there's one for under underline there. Uh, actually, you know what? I did write a blog post for this. We're not really gonna go use this too much as a reference, but you know, I did add some little charts for you know bright colors as well, um, which we didn't show in a sec, but in my terminal case, there's no difference. So I won't even bother. But in any case, yeah, I think the modes are down here. So yeah, we have, you know, bold, dim, italic, underline, blink, inverse, hidden, strike through. And I made a screenshot here for folks just reading the blog post here, showing off what all those look like. It depends really, again, if your terminal and font support that. So like, for example, if we go nine here, we can see the strike through one. That could be fun to see here. So let's do that. I also change the color to red or something like that. And then we can see the red strike through here. And that's it, basically, right? So you set your style up here, what you want with your command, and then you have your text. And then finally, you know, I like to do this. I like to reset things back to their default state here at the end. Technically that's optional, but it really depends on what shell that you're using because, you know, if you did something like this, you know, here we're gonna have strike through, everything looks good, everything looks normal. You know, this command here, you know, my prompt looks normal. It's like, you know, it's, it's been reset, right? So if we go back to here and we remove that reset component here, then, uh, it's also gonna look good. Like, hey, there's no difference here at all. But that's actually Z Shell adding some quality of life features here by doing that reset for us. So if we actually go to Bash here and do the same thing, you know, let's just demonstrate the happy case here, which is gonna be that. You know, everything looks good. You know, everything got reset. But if we don't do the reset here, let's just say we do this, then uh, yeah, that is not going to get reset. And I'm pretty sure regular shell is also gonna be um, no good here. You, you know, it's not gonna do any extra magic for us. Um, yeah, totally messed up. Well, not messed up, but you basically are responsible for resetting that. So now let's maybe go over a couple of more colors, like 256 colors. I'm actually gonna jump back over to here. 
and copy paste some scripts here because you know I didn't create these, but uh, we will get to see what they look like at least on video. So take a look here. You know, it's and by the way, I will mention this this too. If you're using a shell that's not compatible with this type of syntax here, then yeah, you can just run bash and then you should be good to go. But yeah, there's a 16 colors up top. You know, you can see the high intensity ones. For me, at least, they don't look any different than the normal. You know, again, that's going to depend on whatever themes and terminal emulators and all that stuff that you have set up. But here's you know the rest of the 256 colors here. You can see the grayscale stuff on the bottom. You know, of course, some of these numbers are going to be a little bit hard to read, right? This is basically black on a very dark uh, bluish background here with Tokyo Night Moon. And then we have, yeah, all sorts of different other gradients here, which is pretty nice. But yeah, you can copy paste that command here from this blog post. I'll leave a link to this one in the description if you want to check it out. But yeah, the interesting pattern here is, you know, before we were going with zero for resetting things here. Um, but yeah, in this case, 38 is going to be the foreground color. 48 is going to be the background color. Then we have five and then we have some number here. You know, this basically is just looping and putting in a number in this little placeholder spot here. But yeah, let's actually play around with that one real quick. And we'll just go and change this here to be uh, 48 instead and then run this one. That's going to be the background color instead of the foreground. You know, now we can see maybe some of the text is a little bit easier to read, but yeah, you can see how easy it is to switch between background and foreground. That 38 becomes a 48. Now it's the background, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's clear that one and we'll go back to here. And by the way, yeah, I just sniped both of these, both of these examples from Stack Overflow. I will mention here too that uh, near the top of the article, you know, I kind of break down what we just went over a second ago in video, but I link out to this gist here, which has uh, a treasure trove of information about ANSI escape sequences. You know, some of the charts I borrowed from there. You can see um, some more outputs here as well. All sorts of different values, all sorts of different things. Way more detailed than what I'm going into, but I don't know, this video is a little bit more focused on practically just using colors in general here. But yeah, let's go back down here to the 24-bit RGB color one. We'll just see what the output of this one looks like, which is going to be this. And yeah, if your terminal supports it, you should see a very nice gradient going from red to blue with everything in between here. You know, if there's a lot of banding, like things aren't looking smooth, then maybe your terminal just doesn't support that. Or if you're not seeing any output, it's also very possible that your terminal doesn't support it. I happen to be using the Microsoft terminal here. And uh, yeah, I would imagine most modern terminals probably support it. I can't speak to all of them because, you know, I don't really use anything other than the Microsoft terminal. But I'm just going to take a guess here that Ghosty probably works, like Alacrity, Kitty, etc. Yeah, let us know in the comments below if it supports 24 bit true color. Again, you can just Google for these things also, you know, and see if they're available as well. But yeah, the pattern here is, you know, again, just like all the other ones, escape sequence and then, or sequence, and then we have background versus foreground. And then in this case though, you know, we're using a different, um, value here. Again, that's all explained in more detail on this gist here, if, if you want to go into the gory details there. But yeah, then you just put in your R and your G and your B values here um, to get whatever colors that you want here. And this just happens to be an aux script that basically converts, yeah, different colors for T put here into this, you know, escape sequence ANSI color code setup here. Cool. Okay. So that's basically, you know, how to do all sorts of different colors here. Typically in the scripts that I operate with, you know, I tend to support basically just the, the normal eight colors here. You know, maybe I'll start playing around with 256 colors now that I know a little bit more how they work. You know, the syntax here isn't too crazy. And really at this point in time, basically all terminals support. I'm not going to say basically all that's, that's probably a huge um, assumption there, but I would say for the audience of the scripts that I write, probably everybody has a terminal that would support 256 colors. And of course, you know, you can probably add some if conditions in your scripts to be like, hey, if your terminal supports 256 colors, then do this, else fall back to other colors here. I'm sure, or I've seen all sorts of different scripts do that in the past. All right, so cool. Let's uh, skim down a little bit here. You know, there's some color modes. We went over some of the examples here. I didn't actually paste these two in, but you know, it kind of just goes over um, just showing off different things. Like in this case, it's going to be a dim yellow background uh, for this one you know, as long as your terminal supports it. Funny enough though, in my case here, using dim versus not dim for uh, this one, just, you know, the background colors, yeah, they're just not different. So, you know, if I go back to the foreground color here, in this case, you can see uh, this is going to be probably quite a bit more dim here with the yellow. You know, maybe it doesn't come off a lot on video, but this is certainly very, very different uh, what I'm looking at here. This one is a lot more dim on the bottom using two instead of one there for the mode. All right, nice. Uh, let's go over some examples now of just using printf versus echo versus here docs. And we can see how some of this stuff pieces together. We don't really need to go too much into the blog post. Let's just uh, see what I can do just by winging it, winging it here. So let's clear this one. We'll go back to our baseline example here. This is kind of what we looked at at the start of the video. Hello and cyan here, nothing too crazy, nothing new, new happening here. Um, but yeah, let's just say though that 
you want to start thinking about like, well, you know, can I extract these things out to variables just to make it a little bit easier on myself in the future? So I don't need to like, you know, start doing escape characters and semicolons and zeros and all this other stuff everywhere. But like the first step to that might just be like, well, okay, what if I just want to set a specific color here and just like send that in as a variable to printf, right? Before we even talking about like shell variables. So what you could do here is, you know, maybe we can just take this sequence here, uh, the whole thing and just say, okay, we're gonna escape that zero here, 36 and then one M. And then we're gonna go to over here, get rid of all of this. And then you can just start using normal printf stuff like um, like string, like this variable is a string, right? Um, I'm doing this on purpose, by the way. You're going to see this actually won't work because it's literally going to output the string as a string. And that's expected, right? We're saying to printf, by the way, that's a string. Um, but we actually, what we want to do here is B instead. That is going to interpret backslashes. So then, you know, yeah, this escape sequence here is going to be interpreted correctly. And then boom, we're going to get what we want here, which is our colored output, which is pretty nice. We're going to look at a more practical example of using variables, but you can imagine just with this um, context here, like you can just put that into a variable, like at the top of your script, and then uh, whatever function or whatever is doing the printing, you can just do whatever you need to do with um, percent %b there, and then you are good to go. Now let's move on to using echo. So we can do echo. Well, actually, let me up arrow this one a couple of times here, and we'll just go here and do echo. Then uh, what's going to happen? Let's see what happens. Oh, it is going to work, which is pretty nice. Um, but uh, if we go to bash here and then we run the same thing, then we will see, will it work? Will it not work? It won't work because yeah, again, we need to actually use um, some special things with echo to make this work. So in this case, what we could do is just uh, echo dash E and then that is going to escape those backslashes there to make things work. So, you know, it's kind of funny where I really like Zshell, I use it a lot, but it's like sometimes it's not doing magic, but it's doing things that might make you think that things are working for everybody when they're actually not. So like, for example, echo here, like, and, and by the way, there's an extra new line here because, you know, I have one there. So let's just remove that just so we don't see it um, because, you know, with printf, we have to add those. But yeah, in this case here, you know, we can also add a dash E and that is also going to work. But yeah, you would think like, well, maybe you don't need the dash E, but like you actually do if you want to make this work in, in a shell script using bash or just regular process compliant shell there as well. Okay, cool. Let's go to some more examples here. I think that was basically it, except for the here doc one, which I just don't feel like typing. So I'm going to paste this one here and uh, we'll, we'll break it down. So in this case here, there's our hello and cyan. Everything is working nicely here. But if we just try to use a here doc here, like with cat and then, you know, EOF, blah, 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 at the end here, then this actually wouldn't work because cat, the actual utility, will not interpret those backslashes and you'll just end up literally echoing out that. So if we do something like, well, I don't know how this one's going to work. Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to type it in. Uh, 36, 1, M. Hello, I'm just going to put hello, whatever, it doesn't matter. And yeah, we should probably be good citizens of the terminal and also just, you know, uh, reset things back to zero there. And then we'll just do our EOF there. And then, yeah, you can see it's just going to output literally that, right? So then we just basically what we do is just wrap it in echo dash E here just to, uh, to get things to work. And you could use printf too. I find printf to be a little bit more tedious to use in that case though, because, you know, you're dealing with variables and, you know, if you're using something like shell check, then it's like, well, you should probably put those variables, you know, off as an argument to printf instead of inlining them in, into the actual string. So yeah, in that case, might as well just use echo dash E here. And yeah, now let's talk a little bit just about using easier to remember names, right? So, you know, I've got this uh, dot file set up going on here and I have an install script on this one. And if we take a look here at this script, then I do have some variables defined up top for different colors. So like we have, you know, color red. Again, these could be named whatever you want. There's like re and cyan and reset, et cetera. And then I've got a couple of different functions to just to help me out, like, you know, an error function and an info function. You know, the info ones are cyan that go, or the error ones are red. And then you can see, you know, I'm using percent sign B there. And then we're also doing, you know, our error here. Um, that's going to be colored up in red, basically, you know, just because it's red. And then cyan for info level ones. And then, you know, I, I have things set up here where like technically, you know, maybe I could have just put these escape sequences here and then just had like the number or something in a variable. But I like to use these variables in other areas of the script. For example, if we go down to the... Uh, help menu, which is going to be down on the bottom somewhere. I'm actually using green here just to show the outputs here for the commands. And if you actually just want to see what all that looks like here, uh, I guess we can take a look at that. So if I go to, uh, let's say, uh, source, open source, and that files here, and we just take a look here at local one and then run the install script here, then yeah, you can start seeing that up top here, you know, I'm using the cyan here 
which is you know kind of nice just to break this up because this script actually produces quite a lot of output. So let's actually run this one live on video here and just see all the different outputs so you could see how things work here. This should finish pretty quick. I am using Arch Linux, by the way, here in WSL. Um, cool, all right, so that's gonna be done. Yep, I want the sim links, cool, everything is done, sweet using also fast fetch here just because, you know, it's fun to see this stuff um, on different systems. But you can see, you know, if, you, if I wasn't using colored text here, this then becomes a lot harder to skim because there's just so much like normal white text everywhere. So I kind of like that. And then also if we go to the help menu here, you know, here we can just see the green here. I kind of went with green because it's like, you know, the way I have things set up here and, you know, on other systems is pretty similar too. You know, if you're using a shell that supports like having different colors for different things in your command here, you know, green in my case is like, yeah, you're just like running a command, running a script. So then in the help example here, I kind of made those green. So just to correlate more to be like, yeah, you can copy paste that and just like basically run that as a script. Now in this case, there's like optional arguments or whatever, but yeah, I feel it just, again, helps break things up a little bit here instead of just having a whole bunch of different white text. So with that said, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. I will see you in the next video.